Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the next portion of our electricity unit, and it's probably the most difficult part because now we are going to combine resistors both in series and in parallel. And when I say in series and parallel, here are a few examples I could draw for you. We have two resistors in series, maybe even three resistors in series, but over here we have a fourth resistor that happens to be in parallel with the third one. So that means that as current comes out, it splits up at this junction before coming back together, meaning that those two resistors in parallel are going to receive significantly less current because of that parallel portion. Or another way to draw one would be a pa normally this would be a parallel resistor, but you can see that one of the branches has an extra resistor inside, meaning that we have a higher resistance in here which will slow the current down. So the first resistor was a parallel certain portion in a series circuit. The second one over here is a series portion inside a parallel circuit. Okay, and another way to draw would be like this. And you can see it starts to get a little bit more complicated because now I have a series inside a parallel inside a series. But you always have to be able to figure out what's the innermost one, the easiest one that normally we would have to simplify. So this would be a series in a parallel in a series circuit. Okay. <clears throat> and even though it can, it can become confusing, as long as you remember a few basic rules about how to solve par series parallel circuit problems, it's easy to organize and follow through. So the first rule is to always simplify and redraw the circuit. Okay, and we'll go through the steps. Second step is simply to create a chart like we've been doing, an RVIP chart, and include all combined resistors. And the last step would be to work backwards on the chart and your diagrams to solve. Okay. So I know the I make it sound like it's a very straightforward process, but we'll go through some examples. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example over here. We have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, as well as a battery. And you always have to say to yourself, well, as the current comes out, what happens at each point? Okay, and we can see that the current is going to split up into two portions. And whenever the current splits, that automatically means, well, there has to be a parallel circuit because current only splits in parallel circuits. So therefore, R2 and R3 are parallel to each other. So let's actually take this on a smart board over here and do this as a question.
if that drawing is a little confusing to you, remember, these are really just wires that connect to the resistors. It may make more sense if you redraw it looks like this as well. You can draw any number of ways, but they're all technically true. Okay, so I have R1, R2, and R3. And I said that my first rule is to combine the resistors and simplify. And we want to simplify into a basic series circuit or a basic parallel circuit. So in this case over here, I know that R2 and R3 are parallel to each other. So if I redraw this, the circuit now looks like this. We have R1 and R2, 3. So this 2 and 3 have been combined into a single resistor. And that's all it would do. I just want a basic series circuit. Let's assign some numbers. Let's say that this is 8 ohms, 6 ohms. Let's make this uh, 10 ohms. And make this a 20 volt battery. Okay. Now, so that means if R2 is 10 and R3 is 6, that means R2, 3 is equal to 1 over 10 ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms. If you guys use some common denominator, that's 3 over 30 plus 5 over 30, which equals to 8 over 30. So R2, 3 is equal to 30 over 8 ohms. Okay. Or you could say also 3.75 ohms. We are, the next step would be to create a chart. R, B, I, T chart. We have our three resistors. One, two, three. But we also created a new resistor, R23. Okay, so that goes on the chart as well. And then we have total. And the key thing to keep in mind is that we have to just work very carefully and when we work backwards. Let's list out all of our values. We have 8, 10, 6, and 3.75. 8, 10, 6, and 3.75 ohms. And the total battery I said was 20 volts. Okay. And it helps here if you have a highlighter. Because now that we've written this out, we're going to work backwards through our diagram to solve. Okay. So we start with our last diagram first. We can see in our last diagram over here, this is simply a series circuit. The only two resistors we're going to look at are R1 and R23. So if I go back to over here, and if I highlight this, I want to highlight, I'm only doing R1 and R23. So having highlighted R1 and R23, I know that because it is a series circuit, in a series circuit, the resistors simply add. So 8 plus 3.75 is 11.75 ohms. If I want to solve for the current now, the total current inside this circuit over here so total current that's going to come out is based on these two numbers. I is equal to V divided by R, which is equal to 20 volts divided by 11.75 ohms, which is equal to 1.7 amps. That means my total current is 1.7 amps inside this circuit. So as 1.7 comes out, that means 1.7 comes out over here, and that means that this R23 also gets 1.7 amps, because in a series circuit, the current is the same at all locations as it goes around. Now, this is 1.7. This is 1.7 amps. Of course, knowing the current, I can then solve for the potential difference at each location. V is equal to I times R. So I get over here, V is equal to I times R. So 1.7 amps times 8 ohms 
is equal to 13.6 volts. And of course, over here, 3.75, that's 1.7, is also equal to 6. Point, I'm going to round it to 6.4. So that way, my two voltages add up back to 20 volts. So all of this is based on my final circuit, okay? My final drawing over here. The next step is to realize that we need to solve for resistors two and three. And that's when we go backwards now. We started with our most complicated, so our, our simplest circuit, and we're going to work backwards now to the original circuit. And in the original circuit, I can see that, let's see, let's choose a different color. Okay. And this circuit over here, I can see that it's going to be, there you go, a parallel circuit. That means R23 over here is really, in reality, a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, I know that voltage stays the same. So that means that as the first resistor takes 13.6 volts and the second 23 takes 6.4 volts, that means that each branch of that circuit is getting 6.4 volts because it's a parallel circuit. And of course, knowing V, I can then solve for I. I again is equal to V divided by R which is equal to 6.4 volts divided by 10 ohms, which in this case is equal to 0 0.64 amps. And then, 6 point, and then we have 6.4 divided by 6 ohms, which is equal to 1.06 amps. And again, notice that the total is equal to 1.7 because as the 1.7 amps coming out of this battery hits this junction, part of it splits up, goes down, and part of it goes, into, goes to the right. And of course, the 6 ohms having less resistance gets more of the current. So now we've solved for all of the voltages and all of the currents in each one. We can now solve for power. Using P is equal to VI, I can solve for each one. Twenty three point twelve watts, four point one watts, six point seven eight watts, and the total power would be 34 watts. Notice I don't solve for the power in the R23 because this isn't a real resistor. So the next, the final question I can ask here is which resistor is the brightest? And of course, is the one that uses the most power. R1 is the brightest, which makes sense because if you look at our diagram, as the current comes out, R1 gets all of the current. But R2 and R3 have to split that current, so therefore they're not nearly as bright when they come together. And that was somewhat convoluted, so let's try another example problem then. Mm, okay, let's try this one actually. Good. So we have four resistors in this case, and they actually tell us the value of each of the different ones. Let's just copy this and put this onto our smart board. Okay, didn't copy the best, but it's good enough. Now over here, we can see that we have current coming out and it splits up which means automatically that we're dealing with a parallel circuit now. <clears throat> this current continues and goes through 2, 3, and 4 all at once, which means that 2, 3, and 4 are in series with each other before the current comes back together and they go back in. So <clears throat> if we were to do this as an actual problem, 
I'll draw a smaller version of this. All right, one, two, three, four. We want to simplify where it's easiest to simplify first. In this case, that would be two, three, and four, which is a series circuit. So when we redraw this, this would simply become R1, R2, 3, 4. And now I have a very basic parallel circuit, which I'm going to leave just as is. Okay? <clears throat> now, keeping that in mind, okay, how do I actually solve for the total resistance of R2, 3, and 4? Well, in our diagram, we saw 1 kilo ohm, 680, 4.7, okay. So R1, let's actually put this into a chart here. R, B, I, P. R1 was 1 kilo ohm, so that means it's 1,000 ohms. R2 was 680 ohms. R3 had a value of 4,700 and 15, so 4,700 and 1,500, okay. We, of course, created R234 together, and then overall we can create our total, okay. <clears throat> now, because it's series, we simply add 2, 3, and 4, so that would be 680 plus 4,700 plus 1,500, which is equal to 680. So this value is 6,880 ohms connected to our 12 volt battery. 12 volts, 6,880 ohms. Okay. <clears throat> so from here, we solve our simplest circuit first. And our simplest circuit in this case is a parallel circuit. How do we solve for total resistance in a parallel circuit? Well, we simply do. So 1 over R EQ equals to 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 6880. It's a little bit difficult to solve for a common denominator, so I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. And then 1 divided by the answer is equal to 871.79 ohms. Okay? So that's my total resistance. 871.79 ohms. Now, in this case, because it is simply just two resistors, I'm only going to concentrate on R1 and R234, okay? Because that's my parallel circuit. So with R1 and R234, keeping that in mind, that is a parallel circuit, I know that in a parallel circuit, the potential difference is the same everywhere. So if it's 12 here at the bottom, it's 12 here, and 12 here as well. And now I can solve for the current at each location. I is equal to V divided by R. So 12 divided by 1,000, of course, is 0 0.012. 12 divided by 6880 is 0 0.00174, and 12 divided by 871.79 is equal to 0 0.0138, okay? So overall, they add up to be the same amount as the total, but I know, of course, that R234 isn't a real resistor. In reality, it's a series resistor. <coughs> so because it is a series resistor, we'll use a different color here. Okay. So because 2, 3, and 4 is in reality three resistors in series, okay, I know that as my current goes through, splits up into two portions. 
okay? Part of it, 0 0.012, goes straight down, and part of it goes to the right. Now, the part that goes to the right, 0 0.00174, if you think about it, has to go through all three currents, all three resistors, at the same time. So because this is a series circuit, in a series circuit, current is the same at all locations, so that means that this is point zero zero one seven four, point zero zero one seven four, point zero zero one seven four. And now I can solve for my potential difference across each one. V equals I times R, which means The first one is 1.18 volts. Second one is 8.178 volts. And the third one is 2.61 volts. The last and final step in this example would be simply to solve for the power of each light bulb. Over here you have 0.144 watts. Next one you have 0 0.00205 watts. Next one you would have 0 0.0142 watts. And the last one would have Point zero zero four five four watts. So which light bulb becomes the brightest? Of course, that would be the very first light bulb, which has the most power. If you think about it, that makes sense because when the current split up, resistor one took most of the current since it had a lower resistance. Resistor two, three, and four had a much higher resistance, so less current wanted to go through. Now, we're just going to go through a couple more examples about how to combine the resistors, which one comes first, which one comes next, just to finish up this unit. If we label this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the easiest one to combine would be 2, 3 first. So then this would become resistor 1. Resistor 2, 3, resistor 4, and resistor 5. Okay? Now, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are all parallel to each other. So if I want to combine them, it will look like this. We have resistor 1, and resistor 2, 3, 4, 5. So that way we have, ultimately, a simple series circuit. And one more example, we have a slightly more complicated one over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six resistors in total. The question is, which ones do we combine first? <clears throat> so let's actually put this on our smart board over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, in this case over here, we have different options that we could combine together at the same time. As long as we keep in mind that these combined resistors are really a combination of other ones. So, over here, two and three are in series, and four and five are in series as well. So, if I want to combine them together, it'll look like this. Resistor 4, 5, resistor 6, resistor 2, 3, and resistor 1. 
over here. And now we have two parallel circuits that are in series with each other. So I combine these two over here, combine them two over there. That way we end up with resistor 4, 5, 6, and resistor 1, 2, 3. And here's our simplified circuit.